We're having a good chat here uh, during the commercial break with the actor Stephen McGann because here we are, Series 8 of Call the Midwife. He's been there from the very start oh, in all of that. Not only that, but his wife created the series <laughs> and writes for it, so she has his future. She's got the ultimate power. <laughs> oh, how I'd love that. In her. Yeah. She and could they, literally yeah. write you out at any minute. Any minute at all. <laughs> Very pertinent, actually, Stephen. I am. I, I don't know if you know, um, Loose Women at the moment are running mm. a campaign called Face Your Smear. Yeah. Because recent studies and, and numbers show one in three women don't turn up when they're invited for a smear test. And this is terrible. And also I heard that 21... It's the, it's the worst figures for 21 years. It's and so we, we live in a time now where I think we take for granted some of these preventative measures which were placed in the Call the Midwife days. You see the, how excited Dr Turner was. And you don't get cynical about that because back then this was a solution and it was brand new and they mm. could see the evils face to face. Nowadays we can be quite complacent. We don't often see the bad side. And so these preventative yes. measures we can get a bit lazy yeah. with. I think it's very good because you see the history, you think the road that people have tr trodden mm. um, to get to where you are today. Absolutely. And although for some people it may seem like a medieval drama, <laughs> yeah. like, honestly, yeah. you know, I remember doctors in white coats, you remember nurses yeah. dressed the way they yeah. were. And uh, these reforms, um, they just evolve. They evolve uh, over time there. Yeah. But there is that whole educational um, side of it that uh, high he seems to be uh, very keen on, which is yeah. to make it relevant in the messages and things that may have happened then, like yeah. you know, illegal abortions. I don't, you mm. know, you know, it's all it's quite educational. What's really. remarkable about the period is we've always moved one year ahead. We stay strictly in time, so each year we move ahead. But this period post-war, from the late fifties that we've covered to the sixties, is actually full of tumultuous medical developments mm. as well as social developments. Yeah. So, call the midwife. It gets a lot of this stuff from the fact that it sits in this amazing time of change. But it's the very recent past, and it's a great way to show people medically to say, look. You're wondering what this vaccination is for. You're wondering why we've, why we've got to here. Let me take you just a little bit further into the past. This is why maybe we set all of this up with so much effort in the first place. Come and have a look. Come and see what people look like mm. who suffered from some of these problems. Yeah. Come and see what it's like and you'll soon realise why we got to here. And I think that's it's not just important. about nostalgia, is it? No, I mean, people kind of go, oh, it's nostalgic, it's lovely. No. But it's also to show people how people did have to live and the, and the change. And they really and did. how people strive to make those changes. And nurses, and on, nurses on bikes and things. Uh, yeah. And yeah. All those things. And I think um, we've forgotten that would you, the would struggles you, people Do had. you think after playing Turner, would you, have, would you like to be a doctor? Would you have liked to have been a doctor? I would make the world's worst doctor. I can tell you that right now. I'm terrible at it. And the great thing is we have these medical experts on set who make me look great as a doctor. <laughs> but you know the nicest thing when I get stopped by GPs? is they say, because um, we do that very accurately and we, we, we care about that, but they say, you know what I really like, what GPs have said to me time and again, say, well, we know the medical stuff, we know all of that procedure stuff. He said he's tired and sometimes he's worried mm. and he's scared. Mm. And oh, he's got get, his own problem. And he's got his own problem. And to get up in the morning, what moves me so much, is they say, when you show them vulnerable, is when we really get, get involved in the series, because uh, lots of medical staff love the series, but they say, you know, when you get things wrong, because that's what happens too, and it's hard, you know? It's hard to care like that, but it's a beautiful thing that people do. And, and I do think, although you don't want it to be nostalgic, I do think there is a great sense of community that there maybe is. people feel we've lost Absolutely. Now. When people say the N word of nostalgia, it's very easy. It's like a fixed thing, like something preserved in aspect. And I often think it's a bit of a red herring because what it actually is, is what you pointed out there. It's community. Mm. It's like sort of stories about people doing things together. Mm. And if you come back to the medical side of it, some things are better handled, like vaccinations or preventative measures like cervical smear. Some things are better organised when we all get together and organise a system where we can all make each other better. Mm. And that sounds all hippy-dippy, but actually it works that way. That's the way we do it. Well, it's no doubt it's hugely yeah. popular. As you said, you set out thinking you were going to do six episodes. Yeah. And here <laughs> you are. It's popular enough to be eight. a movie, be a film. <laughs> a movie. People are starting to talk about a film. First yeah. answer to that was anyone who wants to come along and make me a film star, they can come along. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, like. Downton Abbey's well, going to be a film. Yeah. Yeah, you see, as long as it's kind of Dr Turner the movie, it'll be... <laughs>
<laughs> Let them come in for a little part around me. That'll be fine. And as long as your wife writes it and makes sure no, you're I, in it. And I don't say anything the wrong way. Don't Does write. your wife critique your performances? Never, ever, ever, ever. We have a sort of unspoken thing is I don't look over her shoulder when she writes. She doesn't, like, look at the way I... I do lines or whatever. There's only one thing we share, and that's when I get the script with everybody else, and then she gets really nervous because she knows I'm reading the script for the first time. Yes. She hangs around outside the bedroom door. <laughs> I go into the grunt or groan or yeah, and I write every single thing. And there was yeah. one brilliant moment where I came out of the bedroom. She's wanting to know if I laugh at the funny bits, cry at the sad bits. And I came out, tears streaming oh. down my face one day. One minute in particularly, sad. you, you! And she was chuffed. <laughs> oh, good. <laughs> Excellent. You, you made you cry. Yeah. Yeah. Well, listen, we Great all love the series. Uh, yeah. It's Sunday evening, of course, um, and long may it continue. Thank you very Thank much. Thank you, Stephen. Thank you, Stephen McGann there.